This is the RBR TVBR In Focus podcast. Here's your host, radio and television business report editor in chief, Adam R. Jacobson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. And joining us today is Paul Kelly. He is the chief revenue officer for A Million Ads. He has two decades of experience leading creative and commercial teams for such organizations as Viacom. And Paul is here to share his insight and knowledge on audio advertising and how it's so hot LinkedIn is getting in the game. So with that, welcome to the podcast, Paul. Adam, thank you very much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Well, we don't think of LinkedIn as anything more than Facebook for the workplace, yet it is rolling out a new events platform, and it is all audio in nature. Now, we know this excites you, Paul, because you're an avid believer in the power of audio. But for our audience, we're wondering how this can translate into more love for marketers of linear audio opportunities, namely broadcast radio and its digital streaming components. That's a great question, Adam. I I think the effect for let's call it legacy or incumbent audio, is the the rising tide analogy. I think that some of the newer innovations in the audio space um, have actually helped, quite frankly, remind people of the power of audio in the first place. Um, There's a natural proclivity or tendency for the advertising community to look at what's new and what's next um, and so I think actually that what the, 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 the medium and long-term effect of whether it's podcast writ large, clubhouse, LinkedIn audio, et cetera, the continual innovation in this sector is, is actually really just serving to remind marketers and advertisers of, of the theater of the mind, as, uh, as someone coined it many, many moons ago. So I think it's a it's a good thing, um, whether you're in traditional audio or whether you're in uh, digital innovation audio, let's call it. We also understand that your ad shop, A Million Ads, founded seven years ago, has delivered some seven billion personalized ads across the globe. You've been working with brands such as McDonald's, Starbucks, and Procter & Gamble, which, by the way, is the number one advertiser of broadcast radio in the United States in 2021. So for radio, personalized can Mm -hmm. tend to be a problem word because it signals love for audio so long as it perhaps eschews broadcast radio. So I'm wondering, in your view, what radio can do to change this perception? Firstly, I think they should feel a a little bit better. Um, Radio, as, as, as you know better than I do, is incredibly strong. I think it constitutes today probably north of 80% of of the listening minutes in the United States. Um, Secondly, I think there's actually a tremendous amount of innovation happening on the the radio side. Um, I'm reminded of of one large company in particular, iHeartMedia, who have their smart audio product. And and I know that they have a a very bold vision when it comes to um, aggregating audiences across audio platforms, whether that's digital or linear. So it's it's perhaps analogous to, to television where, um, yes, you've got a, a high degree of, of target, targetability, forgive me, um, with, with connected TV, maybe more so than you do with broadcast. But that being said, um, there's plenty of innovation happening on the broadcast television side, as we saw with the Open AP consortium a few years ago, which was led by NBC and Viacom. NBC, I think, have recently rolled out a, a, another product. Um, so I see it as, 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 as pretty much the same, where you know, radio as the large incumbent will continue to make investments and progress um, in service of the goal of greater attribution Um, and measurability across platforms for their clients. Um, And as I said, I think that the the companies in the U.S. that that I work with and that I'm aware of um, are doing a very good job on that front. It's very encouraging for you to be saying this because just this week, Sirius XM, through its Ads Wiz technology, rolled out a platform that we see is more in line with addressable advertising than anything linear radio has ever been able to develop. Now, I'm wondering, Paul, what your thoughts are on this only because of the technological advancements that are in place trying to get to that point of addressable advertising, including, in some respects, zone casting. Is this 
something that radio should be concerned about, or is it just additive to the overall audio offerings that are there for marketers, thus a net positive? To be honest, Adam, I think I would I would agree with how you framed it on, on, on the latter, um, it being a, a net positive. Um, I think it's, again, just responding to to the, the demands of advertising clients writ large. Um, but at, at the same time, uh, while it might generate most of the coverage, the fact remains that, that traditional media is very, very powerful, and there's plenty of rigorous academic theory. I'm going to cite Byron Sharp as one who who has very kind of adequately or, or, or articulately, I should say, pointed out that you know the path to growth for most for most companies, forgive me, is is not selling more of the product to the same customer, but actually expanding your customer base. And one of the biases within addressable advertising is that it really does focus the investment on people who are most likely to buy your product. Ergo, some of those people would have bought your product already. Um, and it makes you, and it can make you blind to a large potential group of customers that currently don't buy your product. This, of course, is what broad brand building, awareness-based advertising has always been particularly good for. Um, and so I think any savvy media buyer today understands that they need to have a full funnel view and approach to investment on behalf of, of their clients. And so on the one end of the funnel, I think we'll have a high degree of, of, of attribution and measurement, um, performance-driven media, if you will. But I don't think brand building as a, as a need for the long-term health and growth of brands is going anywhere. Finally, before we conclude the podcast, Paul, we have to address perhaps the elephant in the room, which is the fact that radio is the broadcasting arena versus the narrow casting that per perhaps cheaper and supposedly more efficient digital media delivers mm -hmm. and uh, marketers have been enamored with for the last several years. Uh, we want to ask this question. Why? Why is this idea of narrowing a message so much a focal point for marketers as it seems illogical to take a message and tailor it and, and narrow it down and, and, and chop it down so much that you may hit the wrong target or get involved with bots and fail to get the ROI that reaching to the masses through a media like radio can deliver. I'm really curious as to your thoughts on this. Yeah, um, I think that uh, for, unfortunately, Adam, the, 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 the truth is the, the indicators uh, and metrics that are built into the digital ecosystem make it easier to invest money in those channels because they tell you one way or another, put a dollar in and get a get a dollar fifty back. Now we can all argue the the validity of some of the methodologies. Um, some some miscounting and errors have been you know widely kind of published and reported. Um, and some some brands, including you mentioned P&G, Mark Pritchard has been pretty vocal on the record when it comes to to digital media companies in, in some cases correcting their own homework. So um, I won't speak for Mark, but I think all of that is is kind of out there, as I said, widely reported. Um, I think that marketers today um, are, are very smart, well trained. Um, and as I said, I think the. Uh, the, the strength of broad broadcast, whether that's TV, radio, um, is, uh, is, is well situated to grow with the future and evolution of advertising as opposed to being consumed by it. I want to thank you so much, Paul, for taking time to chat with us today. Do you have any final thoughts before we conclude the podcast? Just that uh, I actually appreciate the work. Um, that you guys do. I am a, an avid reader. Um, I've got, of course, a, a, a big interest in, in, in our company, The Million Ads, potentially playing a role in, in some of those incremental innovations that broadcast radio um, kind of launches in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, 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 the theater of the mind, um, as I said before, um, I think is, is, a, is a true renaissance 
And I think that radio should very much feel part of that club as opposed to, to being left outside. Well, I appreciate that thought, and I thank you again for taking a moment to uh, speak with us on the In Focus podcast. A Million Ads has headquarters offices in London and in the United States. Uh, you can find their office at the corner of 30th and Broadway in beautiful Manhattan, New York City, New York. Uh, with that, I want to uh, take a moment to again thank Paul Kelly for being our guest on this podcast. And thank you for listening to this radio and television business report in focus podcast. Remember, you can follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or wherever you prefer to consume your podcasts. Thank you again, Paul. We look forward to future conversations with you. Thanks very much, Adam. Have a great day from beautiful South Florida. And remember, for more in broadcast media, feel free to visit rbr.com, the online home for the radio and television business report, or our Streamline Publishing co-owned publications, Radio Inc. at radioinc.com, and Podcast Business Journal at, you guessed it, podcastbusinessjournal.com. Take care. We'll see you next time.